Joining us now, co-chairs of the House Problem Solvers Caucus, Democratic Congressman of New Jersey, Josh Gottheimer, and Republican Congressman of Pennsylvania, Brian Fitzpatrick. Congressman, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Thanks, Shannon, for, having thanks for having us. Okay, so let's start here. The headlines overnight are not the ones the White House wants to see. Yet another discovery of classified material at the president's Wilmington home. Jonathan Turley, well known to our audience and a legal professional, a professor and constitutional scholar, tweets this. With the latest discovery, there's no real question that the Biden documents were grossly mishandled. There only remains who was responsible. However, the discovery of documents at yet another location used by the president is crushing for his defense team. He says he's done everything right. He has no regrets. Congressman Gottheimer, should he at this point? Well, I think we need, we've need. we seen that the Justice Department is conducting an ongoing investigation. That's the proper process here. And you want to get to the bottom of these things, which is why they were at his home yesterday in full cooperation. And I think that's the, the what you need to do here. We, the White House needs to cooperate with the Justice Department. That's what they've been doing for months. Obviously, that's in stark comparison to the other investigation of classified documents with uh, former President Trump. And I think well, as long as the White House does what it should do, which is cooperate fully so we can get to the bottom of this, I think that's the appropriate process. And of course, in a broader sense, we should understand in, in any White House, whether it's the last White House or this one, uh, how any documents would ever get out. And the key is to make sure that never happens. So also in contrast is the fact that uh, there have been ongoing negotiations with this uh, Justice Department, with the Biden um, White House and legal team, and there was an agreement for them to be there together Friday during the search. Um, but what we found is leaving more questions than answers for a lot of folks. Uh, Andy McCarthy, former federal prosecutor, tweeted this out. It's not six classified documents, this latest discovery. Awkwardly worded statement by Biden team, i.e. spin as favorable to Biden as possible, with six items consisting of documents with classified markings. And we don't know what they meant by item, box, envelope, or how many classified documents in each item. So uh, there is a special counsel. The investigation's already under the way, uh, underway. You heard Lucas Tomlinson say maybe some Democrat senators are also interested. House Oversight has already said that it's going to investigate. Congressman Fitzpatrick, any worry you have that the House GOP is going to overreach on this or look like they're politicizing it? I don't believe so, Shannon. Um, two things are true. Number one, uh, classified documents can never be taken out of a skiff, ever. Uh, I'm both a former FBI agent and I'm currently on the House Intelligence Committee. That's number one. Uh, number two, we need equal application of the law. And that's what we're going to make sure that we ensure. We're going to do uh, a deep dive into the circumstances surrounding the prior administration and the current administration, both dealing with classified documents, and making sure the law is applied equally across the board. Uh, that's what the American people are demanding. So the Wall Street Journal had reported on conversations between the two teams, the Biden side, the DOJ side, about whether or not FBI agents or others should be doing these searches now that we're on number five. Um, and up until the point on Friday, they had agreed to let the Biden team handle it. The Washington Post also has this, that the White House was hoping to keep this whole thing quiet. The White House was hoping for a speedy inquiry, planning to disclose this matter only after justice issued its all clear. But the approach would end up prompting accusations that Biden's team had purposely kept the public in the dark. Congressman Gottheimer, we know all of this started before the midterms. Do you get the perception that some people have that there are differences in the way the DOJ handles Republican and Democrat cases? I mean, there's a huge difference in the fact if you look at the last administration, the Trump administration, what happened at Mar-a-Lago, there was a refusal to cooperate for nearly a year. Right? There was obstruction. You needed subpoenas. The pres President Trump didn't come forward uh, and, and offer up his documents. He was keeping them locked up. Um, and, and this administration, I believe, has cooperated in a constructive way with the Justice Department from the beginning. They didn't take months. They didn't stall. Uh, he, the president wasn't trying to hold up these documents as trophies. And so it's a huge difference. But the bottom line is this, and Brian is exactly right. We need to have a full cooperation and investigation. We need to get the bottom of what happened, why and when, to understand everything. And in a broader sense, to make sure that no White House, no administration is ever able to handle classified documents this way and, and take them out of the White House from a classified setting. And I think you know, we should get to the bottom of both. 
uh, and I think we should run a reasonable process, and that's what's happening right now. Well, and you all as uh, members of Congress may have more of a, a hand in that um, in the coming weeks and months. Uh, there's this, you know, piece, again, Andy McCarthy speaking out on this, saying after the White House has said there are no logs there, this is a personal home where in the past they've said the president actually does work from there. Um, there are questions about whether there are logs of visitors or people who would have been there. Andy McCarthy writes this, I'm very confident that if the agency, meeting the Secret Service, believed it was in the interest of the president's security that the information would be produced for the Bureau would be produced at warp speed. Now, we've got at least one source saying to us the Secret Service is prepared to come forward with some information about visitors there, but Congress is going to have to ask. Congressman Fitzpatrick, will you do that? We will. Um, Shannon, there, there's multiple ways to gather evidence and conduct investigations. Obviously, a visitor's log would be very helpful if that doesn't exist. You go to other forms of evidence, video surveillance, physical surveillance, uh, witness interviews. There's a whole host of ways to collect evidence. So. Uh, I have no doubt that, you know, certainly we're going to make sure of this, that the Bureau uh, does their job investigating this case. And again, they got to apply the law equally. That's very, very important for people in, in America to have faith and confidence in our justice system. It's a system I worked in for a long time. It's very important for me that they do things the right way so that the American public has confidence in it. And that requires equal application of the law, consistent standards on investigations. That's what we're going to make sure happens. Okay, you all are trying to make sure something else happens, which is that we don't default on our credit ratings and you're negotiating and talking actively about the debt ceiling and a deal that could possibly come together. The White House says no negotiations at all. We know that's not practical, practical given um, some of the demands of House GOP members that spending cuts and other things be included in order to get their vote. Our Edward Lawrence over at Fox Business has been reporting, Congressman Fitzpatrick, you've been working on something that would be a debt to GDP ratio potentially. If you hit a certain number, then automatic cuts kick in. Can you give us any sense of where those negotiations are? What would be the ratio? How in the world do you decide whose programs automatically get cut in that scenario? <clears throat> Yeah, well, the first thing that has to happen, Shannon, uh, Speaker McCarthy has made uh, several overtures to the White House. He wants to sit down and work a reasonable solution out. Uh, I hope the White House accepts his, uh, his offer. Uh, in fact, it was the White House that off uh, offered Speaker McCarthy the opportunity to come in. I hope that happens. And yeah, but they the say White it's House's not going to be a negotiation cannot... over the debt ceiling. They say that is not what's going to happen. That's a problem. That's a problem, and that's not leadership. Uh, when you have a divided government, a uh, four-vote Republican margin in the House, a one-vote Democrat margin in the Senate, divided chambers, <clears throat> you have to negotiate. That's what the American people uh, elected uh, us to do, is to work this out. So nobody should be taking the position that we're not going to negotiate. That's very irresponsible. Uh, to, pertaining to your question, Shannon, one thing that we're just going to offer up as a possible bridge building solution is to go right at the 1917 law itself that established the debt limit. <clears throat> it established it as a, as, a, as a number, a numerical dollar amount. Uh, which doesn't make any sense. We think that, more practically speaking, it should be a debt-to-GDP ratio. Uh, in 2008, our uh, debt-to-GDP was about 40%. In 2018, it was about 70%. It's now at 125%. That's not sustainable. So when you have a child that have a, has a spending problem, you do two things. You pay their bills, and you take away their credit card. You don't do one, you do both. And that's what has to happen here. So what we're going to propose is whatever negotiated amount we can agree on on a debt-to-GDP ratio and have a cure period thereafter. Um, and if that cure uh, does not uh, happen, uh, certain budgetary reforms automatically kick in on the discretionary side. So we're still putting the meat on those bones. Uh, me and Josh are going to work through our proposed solution. But the first thing that's got to happen, uh, Shannon, the president has to sit down with Speaker McCarthy. Uh, Speaker McCarthy offered to negotiate in good faith. I hope President Biden does the same. Okay, so the Washington Post is quoting a senior Democrat over in Congress <clears throat> that says he had a conversation with Ron Klain, White House chief of staff, who may soon be leaving. But he essentially said, no holds barred. There will be no negotiations. You've got to make it look like we're the responsible ones and that the Republicans are essentially irresponsible, trying to kill entitlements and those kinds of things. Congressman Gottheimer, can you work with that? If that is the strategy, if that's the theory, how do you move the ball at all? Well, I've had conversations with the White House uh, just this weekend, and I'm optimistic that they will sit down, uh, as this White House always has, and it's why we're able to accomplish so much in a bipartisan way last Congress. It takes constructive conversations. I think there's things that are reasonable on the table and things that are unreasonable. Gutting Social Security and Medicare is obviously on the unreasonable side. Which uh, the Speaker has said is not on the table. 30%, 30%, 
Just to be clear, the speaker has said so, that know, those that those that that's a talking point and that Republicans mm -hmm. are not going to do that. That's so by the way, that, that's assertion. That's good. That's by the way, that's 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 great. Uh, and because I don't think it should be on the table. Um, things like 30 percent sales tax you know, should not be on the table. But there are plenty of things that should be. And, you know, Brian and I and the Problem Solvers Caucus are obviously having discussions. I think the White House, uh, you see that Kevin McCarthy and the president will be sitting down. The speaker and the president will be sitting down. I think that's a good thing. Um, what we can't do is put the full faith in the credit of the United States of America at risk. We can't put people's 401ks at risk. We need to have these constructive conversations, make sure that we raise the debt limit responsibly so that people can have faith in our country and our currency. And we can also talk about our fiscal health and do that in a responsible way. I think we need to do both. And I, I think, and I'm, I'm optimistic that everyone will sit down, we'll work this out, because we have no other choice. We have to work this out. Okay, quickly, uh, Congressman Fitzpatrick, with that in mind and the potential departure of Ron Klain, knowing what his strategy reportedly is, do you think his departure changes the way that you are able to work with this administration? I don't think so. Uh, again, we're going to we're going to let our speaker take the lead on this uh, with his uh, negotiations, and then Josh and I are going to offer our solution uh, that hopefully can be constructive. But I don't believe it's going to affect our relationship with the White House, Shannon. Uh, we've had a constructive relationship with them. That's our job as as representatives, no matter what party we're from, is to do our part to make government work. Um, and we've worked uh, well with a lot of uh, a lot of people over there, and I expect that to continue. Well, the American people wish you well in trying to find solutions to the most treacherous problems we have now. Congressman, thank you both for joining us. We'll get it done. You bet. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.